Investors, friends, and foes, this is The Option Addict from www.optionaddict.net. And you know what time it is? It's time for another weekly watch list. Matter of fact, if you're new to my site or if this is the first time you're coming across this video, allow me to explain. What I do every week is I go through a portfolio or several watch lists totaling about three to 4,000 stocks. Usually do that on a Sunday night over the weekend gives me an opportunity to kind of look over the market and try to pick my battles that I'm going to place for the upcoming week and this list is what I've whittled down out of 4,000 stocks and these are the stocks I'm gonna be looking at heading into this week's trading so let's go ahead and start off and talk about what's going on what are some of the things to watch out for uh, first and foremost I'm here on a chart of the S&P 500 and we know that that 1400 psychological level is going to be tested as we saw it on Friday we're sitting right there this is going to be the week that it breaks and what's most important here is to see whether or not it's going to hold. So watch that if this starts to crack and if it holds, this is going to be the signal of what should be at least a series of some higher highs. We're going to start heading higher from here. Now, this week has an awful lot of economic data you need to be paying attention to. Consumer confidence, GDP, PMI, uh, the FOMC meeting coming up, non-farm payrolls, unemployment, blah, 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 blah. Got a lot of stuff on this week's docket, not to mention a crap load of earnings coming from stocks like MasterCard, Visa, SNP, that's going to be Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we got Archer Daniels, Midland, BNI, ESRX, VLO. Uh, we've got First Solar, Hess, and Garmin coming up Wednesday. Thursday, DNR, Boom, MRO. These are some all the stocks I'm watching, of course. And on Friday, AGU, ICE, and EOG. These are a lot of stocks I've been talking about recently, so these are the ones that I'm mentioning. These are some of the uh, biggest announcements, I think, that are going to play a part in how the market reacts and they're going to affect some of the industries I'm going to be watching. So just to play a little bit of catch up, some of the things I have been talking about as of late have been uh, China, most importantly, and also Brazil and Chile, some of the emerging markets I think that are going to perform pretty well. Uh, but also I've been talking about food stocks, agriculture, which we're going to get into this week. There's a lot of great dip buying opportunities here. Also in coal stocks, coal stocks are heating up and don't forget steel. Uh, a couple of the groups I also want to be on the lookout for are financials because we're starting to break out of some resistance levels, just like the overall market is doing here, and healthcare. I think we might have put in a bottom in healthcare. That might not be this week, but in the upcoming weeks in general, I think we're going to have seen a bottom here. So I'm going to start off with a couple price patterns that we're going to watch for this week. And uh, the first one we're going to look at is ticker symbol SII, which is Smith. And the reason we're starting here is because this stock had a monster breakout of resistance right around $75 per share. But what it's been doing here, it's been consolidating. So this is kind of the uh, flag formation that I've been watching. If you draw the base of this flag here, it's right at around $70 per share. The top here is about $77, $78. So this is telling us that once this breaks out to the upside, we should be looking for about a 10% move, about seven to eight bucks. So uh, this is definitely going to be something I look at as far as calls are concerned. Also relatively low implied volatility for the last few months, which is uh, what I like to see here. Next, we're going to look at SLB, which is Schlumberger. And also you can see kind of the same pattern going on here, a nice little flag pattern that measures about yeah, 10 points or so. Uh, this was on an earnings run a couple of days to the upside and a little consolidation to the downside. So you should be looking to pick it up right around these old levels of support and also that magical 100 number, the big Benjamin, big century mark here. Next, we're going to look at CYT, which you'll remember from last week's watch list. We've got a nice breakout of this symmetrical triangle. And what we've done, we've consolidated here, we're flagging, and then we broke out as of Friday. Uh, the volume wasn't necessarily there, but I like the fact that this could be a pretty good support level for the stock. And I still have a pretty large price target on this stock based on the size of this pattern. So if you are interested in this stock here, I think this is going to be one of the best opportunities, one of the lowest risk places to pick up some call options. Next, I'm going to look at Medtronic, which is ticker symbol MDT. If you look at this, we've got a nice little triangle consolidating here. And this one happens to be about seven points wide from top to bottom. So I'm looking for a breakout either to the upside or the downside in this pattern. And uh, this should signal a pretty big move for the stock. So keep an eye on it. Next is Striker, ticker symbol SYK. Same thing. Prices have been starting to coil up here as of late. Uh, 
Earnings was kind of a non-event for the stock, and implied volatility has really drained, which means options are going to be relatively cheap. I'm waiting to see which way prices break out of this pattern so I know whether I'm to buy calls or buy puts here. But in any event, we're going to see a pretty big move, uh, about 10 to 12 points is what I'm anticipating. Next, I'm going to get crazy and throw an ETF at you, and this is one I talked about in some of the uh, not-so-volatile market workshops a while back. And this is the XLY, which is the Consumer Discretionary Security ETF. This is going to be stocks like uh, Home Depot, which not to mention, uh, I took a trip out to Home Depot this weekend, could not find a place to park, uh, which has me all excited inside. I'm really bullish on the consumer right here, especially as I look through all the stocks in my watch list this weekend. To me, this market looks like it's just getting ready to pop. Therefore, I've been watching the XLY as kind of a measurement of that to see how the companies are holding up. Uh, you can see that this pattern that I've drawn here, this triangle that I've been watching for the last several months, we are now starting to close outside of this level, which is something I'm going to load up on as kind of a bullish instrument here at these lows. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the consumer here. Uh, a couple other stocks I want to get to, uh, ticker symbol LUFK, which is in the old uh, machinery stocks group, the ones that we talked about a couple weeks back. Uh, this stock broke through some significant resistance on earnings and it's pulling back to these old highs. Now this might not look as good here in a one year chart, but on your own time pull it up in a five year and it's looking really good. Uh, the closer it gets to 72.50, the more I want to buy calls on this. So that's what I'm going to be watching for this week. I'm also watching Viacom. I had a hard time finding stocks I was bearish on. Viacom was definitely one of the best that were out there. If you look at prices here over the last couple of months, we got a, a monster triangle pattern here, and the stock has now broken to the downside on this, which means we should see at least a test of these lows in the short term. But uh, longer term, this pattern here is about eight points wide, and for a $30, $40 stock, that's not bad. That's 20%, so I'm loving that. Uh, next, I'm going to look at HLX, and that's Helix Energy Solutions. This I'm watching is kind of an inverse head and shoulders formation. Uh, volume starting to pick up here as the stock is starting to break into new highs. I think I want to see one more day, and of course we've got some earnings coming up next week, so I don't necessarily want to trade in front of that. I, I don't know about the stock here at these lows yet. I think it still has something to prove. But uh, what you notice here is options are relatively cheap. You're going to notice that with a lot of these stocks heading into earnings is that volatility is not really driving up. It's actually been spilling off. A couple other price patterns we're going to look at. Uh, next on my list is CRL, which is Charles River Labs. And uh, this one's also got earnings next week, but what I'm seeing here is a double bottom formation. We're at some resistance here at about $60 per share. So I'm looking for a break that is going to signal, uh, I think, a pretty big move in this stock, about a $7 move. Uh, but again, be careful ahead of earnings. Don't necessarily want you to trade in front of that. But that might be the event that sends it over the top. Last but not least for price patterns tonight, we're looking at JWN, which is good old Nordstrom. One of my favorite retail pads. You can see the formation here. I already have it drawn out for you. Nice little triangle here that happens to be about, let's call it seven, eight points wide. Uh, for a $30 stock, it's starting to get outside of that. The volume's not there yet, but earnings have already come and gone for this stock. So uh, I think another solid day here with or without volume, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start buying some calls. So I talked about some of the groups I'm bullish on this week. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to be bearish on. I've, I've looked and looked, and I've, I've got a few stocks I'm going to throw at you here uh, via some slides. In fact, what I'm going to do is share all of them with you here at one point. The dips, the rips, the breakouts, and the breakdowns. So here you go. All in all, after my research this week, all I've concluded is there's a tremendous amount of bullish setups out there. There's not a whole lot of bearish setups out there. The ones that are, they're on really cheap stocks, which means you know these stocks aren't going to get all that much closer to zero before they start going up again. So we're at a really peculiar position here. Make sure you're not under diversifying your accounts here. Don't run out and start buying calls on everything. I think you still got to look for places to buy some puts. And while I may not have the best list, I mean, I've got about probably uh, two dozen things here. Uh, you might want to go out there and run a few searches on your own, look for some stocks that you think look pretty weak or that you expect to continue heading lower. Uh, but all in all, this is a pretty good sign for the market from what I'm reading so far. But as always, I'm going to keep you updated Monday through Friday with all my opinions on what's going down in the market and plenty of ideas to throw at the market in the meantime.
So we'll go ahead and end off there. This has been The Option Addict, and that's my watch list. So thanks for watching. Would you say you're completely full of shit or just 50%? I hope just 50, but who knows.